Hello everybody. Welcome to Lisa Loves Stitching um, studio vlog uh, episode 2 for season 2 um, and it's the 5th of February uh, 2022. So welcome. I'm just going to open this window a little bit because it's a bit warm. Uh, I thought, oh, I haven't had the energy to record a um, video for you um, this past month. Uh, I don't know, I just lost my mojo for it. And um, anyway, I think I was putting too much pressure on myself with trying to get some models stitched and things like that. Um, so I lost my momentum. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm late again as usual. I don't think I'm going to... I, I, you know, I work full time, I do my business outside of work hours, uh, designing uh, cross stitch, if you're not familiar with Lily Pilly Stitches, I design cross stitch under that name, um, and my Etsy shop is Lily Pilly Stitches, which you find the link below, um, and I sell needlework accessories as well as uh, my own cross stitch, uh, PDF cross stitch designs. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think I put too much pressure on myself uh, to, you know, do all the things. And so, uh, yeah, I've, I've been away for a lot longer than I expected to be. So I'm very sorry about that. Um, if you're new to my ch channel, welcome. Um, and welcome again if you are a subscriber. Um, you can hit the subscribe button down below. And there's a little bell if you want to get a notification when I do load a, a new video um and also if you would um hit like if you enjoy this video that would be wonderful um so yes yeah, so i'm coming to you from sunny brisbane in queensland australia and i um mainly at the moment cross stitch um and design cross stitch patterns but i'm also a knitter um i'm getting into quilting uh learning lace making like bobbin lace making which i'll share some of that with you today um i tried all the hobbies <laughs> i've done weaving i've tried spinning that wasn't my jam um and sewing just general sewing um though i've never um bothered going into clothes yet um just because i'm a bit intimidated by it but eventually i might get around to it but yeah, it's hard to try and fit in all the hobbies all the time. And um, I have some autoimmune issues like rheumatoid arthritis that um, sometimes mean I have to swap between hobbies because um, my, due to my joint pain, I have to change it up so that I can give one area of my body a, a rest. Um, sometimes my hands are too sore or my back's too sore, things like that. So um, yeah, so anyway, so that's me. <laughs> probably more information than you needed. Um, I work um, full-time as a um, project information management specialist in the construction mining sector and um, and then craft in all my spare time. <laughs> in between Wayne and I going on road trips and he likes to go kayaking so we often will be at Bribey um, Island which is about oh, an hour's drive north of where we are in Brisbane and um and we always have picnics so if you're a bribe at, at on a weekend you might see see us over there with our dogs <laughs> we have two no kids but two lab, um fur kids uh they're labradoodles um sooty who's black and she's got um some white and tan in her and uh she's a medium labradoodle and paris is a um, chock sable and she is a mini labradoodle so yeah so we're always getting out and about together with uh, the dogs which we like to refer to as the hoons because they're always getting up to mischief <laughs> so what have I got for you today you've got no idea how messy my sewing table is right now and as you can see I've got stuff all behind me <laughs> ready to show you I've got lace making um, I've got uh, my journal to share with you, um, I've got my uh, latest design that I'm working on, um, some FFOs and new designs that I've released since I talked to you last, um, I've got my Queenslander sampler, 
which I'm running behind on. I've got some slow stitching and some knitting to share with you today. Um, so get a cup of tea or coffee or your favourite beverage, whatever that is, and um, get comfy and sit back and relax and, and stitch or knit or crochet or whatever whilst you listen. So I've reversed the camera as in it's I can't see the screen now on my phone so hopefully you're getting all of this and I'm not going to get to the end of it and go oh my god my head's cut off or something's cut off. <laughs> um, so I apologise. Hopefully everything will show up nicely on the camera. Um, it's just that I've got some stitching to show you that has writing like words in it and I wanted it not to be back to front. <laughs> so here we go. So I'll start with my two FFOs. So earlier in the month I um, designed a winter pattern. Um, so when I was a child, um, as autumn started, you know the days are starting to get cooler and sometimes that you feel that real chilly bite in the in the air in the morning and um, or in the evening and mum would come in and say to me Jack Frost is here or Jack Frost has been so I thought I'd do a um, a winter design that's not a, it's not a tiny small but it's not a huge pillow um, finish that I've done and I've trimmed it with the chenille trim that I have available in my shop um, I did end up because this is quite delicate trim and, and this pillow is very stuffed, I did end up um, just using some E6000 glue to glue it down around the perimeter of the pillow because um, I didn't want um, dragging the thread through to damage the chenille or to be hugely noticeable um, that it was stitched on. So that's if you're wondering how I did that. Um, and then the back is Liberty fabric that my mum gave me that she bought a couple of years ago. And so I decided to use that and I lined the pillow with um, medium weight interfacing, iron-on interfacing. And the um, project is stitched with um, 32 count mushroom Lagana even weave. And um, the thread is Cottage Garden Thread Sandy Bay, which you can get from Mojo Stitches. That's where I purchased it from. But a lot of other stores overseas um, carry Cottage Garden Threads now. So um, have a look at your local needlework shop. Um, but uh, I also do give a DMC conversion for the darker blue colour if um, you prefer to use DMC. Um, but... <laughs> The beauty of cottage garden threads is they're highly variegated and um, they just are beautiful to stitch with. So um, I wanted to, you know, do a project where I just use one thread. And I mean, this over here in Australia, they're about seven dollars um, a skein. And um, this project's done, and you've got plenty left over for another project. Uh, so you only have to buy one skein. So that's that's reasonable, I think, to try out a new fancy floss and um, if you don't if you prefer um, DMC there's nothing wrong with DMC um, you know I do give that conversion so you just won't get the gold color through it but anyway here it is it's uh, Jack Frost is here and hopefully you can see that I'll go in and out closer so there's snowflakes pretty different different types of snowflakes and then Jack Frost is here um, just across it and there's the chenille trim and the Liberty back and I basically stuffed this pillow within an inch of its life and I just used I'll have to do some more glue under here just to tighten that up but for now that's okay um, but underneath I just closed the hole um, with mattress stitching so yeah so it's really pretty I, I really love it it's available in my Etsy shop Lily Pilly Stitches and the link will be below um, and it's a PDF so um, if you're ordering my PDF patterns from Etsy uh, you won't be able to download them from your phone or iPad or tablet uh, you'll need to go in through a browser um, on your computer and um, and then you'll be able to instantly download those patterns and then you can put them into Pattern Keeper um, you can um, I guess email them to yourself and then download them onto your um, tablet and open up in Pattern Keeper so they are compatible with Pattern Keeper which I've started using and I find really handy um, so yeah 
there you go. So that's um, Jack Frost is here. We'll just sit him here for the moment. And then another one I did for this month of February um, is I did a little small and it's called Love Is All You Need and it's also on 32 Count Mushroom Lagana and um, it's all done in DMC 321 which is a red. And then I just added some pins that I had happened to have that had red beads in um, that I made myself, counting pins. I do have some, not exactly these ones, but I have um, some counting pins in my shop as well. Um, but yeah, so there's Love Is All You Need. And uh, the ribbon is Sari ribbon I purchased from uh, Mojo Stitches. And all I did was with the ribbon, say you've got... Um, take it out this ribbon and show you you just thread a needle put a knot at one end make it nice and long and you just go up down up down up down and make a running stitch all the way along your ribbon and as you go you can pull it and it will gather that that ribbon in and ruche it so that it looks like this um, so that's all I did with the sari ribbon and um, I had this um, scissor because this is a pin keep I had this scissor fabric that's got red in it so I used that for the backing and then I had some leftover red floral fabric from um, scraps from uh, the quilt I'm currently working on and so I used that for the bottom as an accent um, and this little pin keep is also available in PDF format in my shop um, for Lily Pilly Stitches and um, It's just really cute and it only took me You know basically an evening to stitch it and I finished it the next day and um, Was able to share it with you. So this is a really good one that you could get done right now before um, Valentine's Day and have it on display um, with your Valentine's Day core so it's really really cute and it's really nice and padded because I actually lined um, instead of using medium weight interfacing I actually use bamboo batting on either side of the fabric on both sides so it's nice and gives it a nice firm smooth um, feel and uh, yeah made this a perfect little pin keep um, so you could display this and or give it to a friend um, so that's available now. All you need is love. Oh, where am I going to stick that? <laughs> Back over here, I think. So that's my uh, FFOs and new releases. And then I'm just going to get for you my... Um, oops. Oh my goodness. I've got thread caught up in here it on me luckily it pulls out okay so this is bunny burrow which I shared with you in the last video and I'm working on it to get it finished it's a model and I'm just going to take it out of the um, hoop so it's not iron sorry about that um, but I did hear recently that oh, you shouldn't iron your fabric too much because it can damage the fibers so um, you're just getting it as it is. Um, use the back of the bag to hold it. Okay. So, this is Bunny Burrow. So, we now can see Mr. and Mrs. Bunny out the front of their uh, little house, their burrow. And we've got some lovely tall flowers on the top. And one of their baby bunnies is peeking around the corner here. And the other one has got its back turned and it's looking for some Easter eggs, which I'm slowly putting through. And um, there's the window. And I'm just doing the front door. And there's the roots of the branch, like the plant roots coming through into the burrow. So this is all cottage garden threads. Um, but I will give a DMC conversion for the pattern. And this is the one that I kind of burnt myself out on. I was trying really hard to get this stitched and finished to release um, by the 1st of February, but it just didn't happen. And I ended up just feeling a bit done in. <laughs> and um, 
you know, it's a lot of work to try and get done um, in a short space of time. So yeah, I've got the little letter box here with a spider hanging down and um, a little flower. And there's gonna be a little basket here of Easter eggs and then more, fla more flowers like this coming around here and a few more of these. And that's basically it, the grass will come down here and there'll be another window and um, the front door and then their little basket. Um, so <laughs> that's really cute, I love it. It's on fabric dyed by number 12 um, Stitch Co. Um, duck egg, yeah, 36 count duck egg, I think it is, or it could be 40 count. I think it's 36 count duck egg and yeah all cottage garden threads so I really love the variegation in this so hopefully you can see this okay um, so that's something to look forward to I wanted to get it out as soon as possible so that people could stitch it for Easter this year but it might be closer to Easter that it comes out and I'm just decided I'm not going to pressure myself it's just you know it'd be different if I didn't work full-time in my day job um, I'd have more time to spend on this but yeah trying to do all the things and I have um, dry eyes so um, sometimes they give me migraines so it's um, you know I'm limited in what I can do in the amount of time I give myself so um, I need to just uh, take a chill pill as they say and take it as it comes <laughs> um, so that's that one and then the only other um, cross stitch I've been working on lately and I haven't finished January yet. So Nick um, from Nick's Days has um, done January House and it looks amazing. And she persevered even though um, the colours are quite close together. Um, so this is what I have done so far. So when I last showed it to you at the end of last year, I had only just sort of done a bit of the roof line and maybe the stairs. But now I've, I've filled in a lot more of this. So I've just had problems with my eyes. And so it's been a bit of a chore to try and get it done. Um, but yeah, and I got a bit... I think I've done that part of the border already last year. So I just did more on the house. And I'm loving how it's turning out. I'm really pleased with it. And this is also a design available in my Etsy shop. And this is Spring Fling... Um, I think it's... 40 count spring fling from um, number 12 stitch co um, and if she doesn't have this color available please contact her like via on etsy direct um, messages and ask her if if it's possible to get hold of it in 32 count or whatever count you want or in ada um, and she she might be able to dye that up for you um, but uh, yeah I've been selling a few of these patterns lately so I'm excited to see start seeing people stitch it um, and and see that on Instagram so that's what I've done so far and um, this fabric is just it doesn't come up on the on the screen how it is in real life it's just such a fresh spring green it's it's beautiful yeah so yeah I'm really happy with my Queenslander house and I'm not sure I think I could have I might have one or two left of these or I might have sold out of them I'm not sure these um, needle minders they're really cute so that's all I've done so far so if you want to see the completed January house go over to Nick's Days <laughs> I'll put the link below and check out hers because it's beautiful um, so I need to catch up with Nikki and get this done for January and start February's so that's um, that's all the cross stitch I have today. So if other crafts doesn't interest you, that's quite all right. And thank you so much for dropping by. And I look forward to seeing you next time. But if you would like to stay and see other things that I've been working on, we'll get into it. So um, I decided to start a... Uh, a cardigan and I wanted to use up like single skeins that I had now it's called the brook green cardigan and I'll put the link to it below and it's fingering weight or four ply yarn and I'm this one I can't remember the name of it 
something spring. I got it from That Yarn Place um, near Samford. Um, it's a yarn shop there. And uh, it's a really gorgeous coloured um, yarn. So this is where the I'm doing the top raglan increases to where the um, I split for the sleeves and once I split for the sleeves and I've done the increases I will stop and change to a different coloured yarn um, and leave the rest for the sleeves to split between the two sleeves so that it the lines go across the sleeves as well as the body of the cardigan but this is what I have done so far so I'm almost, I'm getting there with the increases. I think I'm past the halfway point with the increases. So you can see the raglan increases come here. So this part is the back that goes over your neck. And then I'm working on, this is the for the sh shoulder, for the arms. And that's going to be the front coming down the front of my chest. So yeah, really loving how it's knitting up so far. I'll just show you that. The fabric's gorgeous. This is all in stocking it. And I just decided to wing it. Um, because it's a raglan, I can sort of semi try it on, and if it doesn't fit, I can keep doing more increases. So I didn't swatch. Uh, <laughs> risky, I know, and I'm just using 3.5 millimeter. Um, interchangeable needles um, there so um, these are my favorites to stitch on so yeah loving this and I've got my um, progress keepers that are available in my shop my Christmassy ones and yeah just love it so um, I'm looking forward to getting through the um, to the to splitting for the sleeves because after that there's no more increases to worry about it's just back and forth, back and forth, and changing up the yarn as I go till I get down to the um, bottom. And then um, I just got to come back and do the sleeves matching the yarn to the stripes on the front. So that's what I have been working on knitting wise. Um, okay, uh, I'll show you my slow stitching next, and then I'll go on to lace. So my slow stitching I've got this vintage sewing basket. It's absolutely chockers at the moment. <laughs> and um, I want to get a new one on payday um, because although this is old and cute, um, it's crusty. <laughs> and I did try to repair it and things like that and I added a lining, but it's just crusty. <laughs> and I don't want to put my fabric in it really. So um, I'm going to leave this one as a display one and get a new one to use so i have been doing some slow stitching and if you haven't heard of slow stitching there's a whole movement and it's about using scraps bits of doilies scraps of fabric that you've got like little they can just be like real tiny like i've got this doily that my great aunt made like she started to make and she never finished it so i'm going to put this in my slow stitching um scraps of fabric uh look even little tiny things that you'd normally throw out you can use um trim um embroidery thread whatever you've got going so i just cut out a um a piece of um beige colored plain quilting fabric but you could use any piece of plain fabric a bit of old sheet doesn't matter um, so I just cut it out in a rough, rough rectangle and then you just start to hand stitch those scrappy pieces onto your fabric and you just come back and embroider it and shush it up do whatever you want add trim you could be bits of clothes favorite old shirts and things or shirts from children or dresses from your children's clothes or just like little bits and pieces of fabric that have memories in them so my mum gave me a heap of um beautiful liberty type fabrics and i had some scraps left over from recent projects where i made the um the bird um so i decided to put these into it so here it is in all its oh upside down here it is in all its glory 
So I've still got some beige bits to fill in. But I'm literally just patchworking it like a crazy patchwork. I'm just sewing, hand stitching it down. I'm not intending to be super neat. It's quite rough. That's the back. It's quite rough. But I like that. That's what I want is that rustic hand stitched, handmade feel. And then this is um, part of a doily that my great aunt was starting to make. But obviously she scrapped it because um, it wasn't sitting flat. So I thought, what am I going to do with this? Oh, I don't want to get rid of it because that's her beautiful um, crochet lace. So I just hand stitched it down with um, Dolce de Leche. Um, is that uh, Gloriana threads or something? Anyway, fancy floss that was pale pink. I literally just stitched it down. So this kind of looks like it's floating. You can't really see the stitches. And then there was another piece here that was loose that she'd left, half like not done. So I just stitched that on like as if it was coming away from the um, piece. And then there was another doily flower thing, so I stitched that down. And then this, I just cut out, I had that blue fabric and I just cut out petal shapes and stitched them overlapping each other using chain stitch with some DMC thread all the way around. And then it had like um, this was one of these um, hexagon shapes from this fabric I cut out and I just stitched it down, left it opening, stuffed it, sealed it up and then um, put a, but a vintage button in the centre to pull it down like a pillow. And then because this edge was raw where the fabric had been sewn down, I got, I had um, Mojo Stitches, Joanna, she if you buy a few items from her shop, she'll sometimes um, tie it all together with a bit of leftover sari ribbon. So this was just a little small piece of sari ribbon and I just ruched it using that running stitch and then I stitched it down around the flower. And it just finished it off nicely. And, um, oh, and then I did a little Suffolk puff. Um, so literally you just get a circle of fabric do the running stitch and when you get to the end you pull it and it gathers the fabric in to make this little gather and then in the center I just sewed a button so that's how you make a Suffolk puff and then um, this is a sample of my uh, beginner lace making which I uh, made recently so I decided to stitch that on as a memory from this year and see so even this little piece of fabric just any little scraps that you would normally um, get rid of you can use in your slow stitching and I tell you you can just have it sitting by your chair um, in your little sewing box or whatever or in a tin biscuit tin and it doesn't matter what color thread you use you can color coordinate it if you want and then you can come back over the top of this once you're finished and do some embroidery stitches and add a bit of trim I added some ribbon here and then I roughly stitched it down with blue thread um, so you can do whatever you want um, and then you could save these squares and do a whole heap of them and then join them up and make them into sort of like a crazy quilt or you could make this into a wall hanging um, if you backed it and everything or what I might do is um, put this in a frame and frame it on the wall so I have a record of my great aunt's um, crochet lace and my lace and and just hang it on my wall as a decoration in a frame so it doesn't get dusty and because we get a lot of dust here so I think I might just frame it and hang it on my sewing room wall so that's really pretty um, I think it is anyway <laughs> Um, so yeah so I definitely recommend it and I was inspired to start this by um, Sherry Iris, she has a, um, a knitting um, vloggy podcast, so if you look up Sherry Iris, and um, she also hand dyes yarn, and her son does these beautiful illustrations of birds and things, and they have these themes to their knitting um, uh, yarn 
boxes and stuff like that. Um, and she does an advent knitting advent calendar every year. She's based in the UK. And um, anyway, Sherry has started a separate Instagram, which I'll put below both of her Instagrams. But her other one is um, selvage.chronicles. And um, this is where she's sharing her slow stitching. And slow stitching can be cross stitch. It can, because it's something you're stitching slowly by hand. So you can share using the slow stitching movement hashtags um, or selvage.chronicles hashtag. Um, and, you know, she loves seeing whatever you do. But um, if you just follow those hashtags, you get lots of inspiration. But yeah, so embroidery, anything hand stitching um, and making this sort of scrappy, crazy quilt type little piece. Um, so yeah, so anyway, I've gone on too long about this, but I really love it. So check those out um, at the links below. So that's my slow stitching. And then um, I recently got some threads for my lace making. Some sulky and some crochet cotton thread, which is thicker, just so that I can learn. Because I found this 16th century pattern um and it's a for a 16th century lace sampler and i haven't got the um pattern here but anyway i'll maybe insert a picture that you'll see from when i show you the pattern here on the pricking which is what you call the card where you prick little holes to um make your pattern so it's called the pricking um, and so it's this crochet cotton that I'm using in these colours to follow the pattern exactly so I can understand how the pattern works and where I'm supposed to go. And it is cotton pearl, 10 gram balls of size 8 um, thread in red, green and blue. 321, and 700. And then I got this sulky thread. So I got this lovely sort of pinky lavender mauvey colour. And this is the um, number 12. And I got this beautiful uh, red. This is colour 1035. It's like a rusty red and then this one's color 1031 and then I got this variegated one called color 4021 and it's this beautiful green thread so really looking forward to using that in my lace making but here oh I also recently made this to hold my bobbins so I do have some spangles if you are into lace making I made a few spare spangles that I have available in my shop. So these are what you put on the end of your bobbins. Um, there you go. And those ones. Um, but I wanted a case that I could use to hold my spare bobbins. So I had this Parisian Eiffel Tower fabric. And I had this vintage reproduction um, 1930s fabric, floral fabric. So I just did that. I added a button, a wooden button on the front and just a ribbon. And then you just wrap it around the button to tie it off. Um, and then I've got pockets in here for my bobbins. And it fits a pair of bobbins in each thing. So this has got some thread on, but this is what bobbins look like for lace making. And there's all different ones. Some are just plain wood. Some, um, the European ones are like plain wood. Um, but these are the, um, what are they called? Something Middleton or something Bobbins, but they're from like um, Britain. And uh, I just made these with beads I had spare. And so the idea is you have a pair and that pair stays together so the threads you normally um, one piece of thread on both bobbins and then there's a lace makers um, knot which um, well I can get this in here there's a lace makers knot which this has just slipped off 
because I had to pull it apart. Um, but when you're doing lace makers knot, you just um, two fingers around and then you're putting it over this little hump and then you pull it like that. And that way, when it's hanging like this, it doesn't unravel. But when you're um, off to the horizontal, you can just twist it and it lets more thread come off the um, bobbin as you need to extend it to uh, use more thread. So I made that for myself. And then here is my cookie pillow for my lace making. And this cloth down the bottom is normally, I put that over just to protect my um, current project. And I do have a big bag, canvas bag, I can put this in. Um, you have sometimes some really big ginormous counting pins. I got this from a lady who doesn't have a shop anymore that's in Tassie. These are so cute. And uh, these are my bobbins. So this is my current project and I'm trying to share it with you without knocking it everywhere. I've got my little pin cushion that come with the kit um, that has all my pins in it. So you need sort of thinner dressmaking pins. And um, this is my pricking card and it has my pattern on. So I printed my pattern in colour to make this one myself. And then I got some pink cardboard and I cut it out and it's easier if you can have coloured um, contact because it makes it easier to see the white thread over it. But in this case, um, I just printed the coloured pattern and then put on some pink cardboard and then use contact to cover it, to protect it. And then you have to go along with a really, like a poker, like um, it's called a pricker. But I lost mine. I can't find where it is. It'll be somewhere in my room here. Um, but I had an awl um, for poking holes in things. So I just used that to prick all the little dots where the needles are supposed to go. The... And then you start off with your needles up the top. Um, normally these wouldn't be separated, but this pattern calls for it to be sort of starting out separate. But normally uh, you would end up twisting these together just to join them. And then eventually, once you get down further, you can take these pins out up the top. Um, and yeah, so what I've been doing with this 16th century one, it's in three different colours. Um, and I've got my different spangles here. And so we've got pairs. And what happens is I'm doing a braid stitch, like a cross, uh, it's just called a half cross stitch and making a braid and I'm braiding my way down to each pinhole and then I'm doing a lazy um, cross which is a way of joining these two colours together as I get to the pin and I put the pin in then I do the lazy cross and that crosses them off and um, and then I keep going till I get down to the next one and the next one um, so yeah basically um, a cross stitch in um, lace making is you're crossing these two and then um, you're getting this one and this one and crossing them over their other pair. Um, I'm just going to put that back how it was. Um, so that's a that's a half cross and you can add extra twists in and things like that and it goes on from there. So basically it's sort of like a combination between macrame um, braiding someone's hair and weaving. It's basically weaving. Um, you're weaving these threads in amongst each other um, to get the pattern to come out. And you put a pin where you want that pat as to hold in place where you need your um, thread to stay so that it makes that pattern. So when I get to the end, I can pull all these pins out and these will stay in place and I'll have my piece of lace edging. So this one is a sampler um, showing and it gets more involved as you get on, if you can see down there. Um, I might just pull, I've just got that pin down. Just pull that out. So you can see here it gets more involved and more sort of medieval looking. Um, so I'm starting out with the basic and it's just my way of learning. And then eventually I could do this pattern with just fine white thread, number 20 size thread. And um, this would look like a beautiful piece of edging. So you could do... These are all separate little patterns, but this is a sampler. So I'm, I'm doing a sample of them to learn how to do them. Um, so yeah, so I really want to be able to learn how to make like nice fine edging that I could use in my other projects, my slow stitching on a project bag or something like that. So um, yeah, so that's my bobbin lace. 
in a nutshell and then you just cover these up um, when you're uh, not in use. So this one's um, cookie pillow is I think mostly a bit of styrofoam on a um, like a MDF back um, but some of the you can make your own pillows and they've got straw and stuff in them. Um, it's not a cheap hobby. <laughs> Um, the kit that come with like about 10 bobbin sets and um, the cookie pillow, the fabric and the pin cushion, the pins and three spools of thread and an instruction book along with like a clear case to put a bookmark and a clear case for a coaster to make your lace sample coaster and it came with um, three pricking patterns as well. Um, that cost me about 120 Australian. I don't know if I paid delivery on top of that, but that was from Harlequin Lace in the UK. Um, if you're in the US, there's, I think, a place in the US called Snow Goose. So you could check them out. But um, I got mine from Harlequin Lace. And I've got my eye on a travel um, pillow that fits in a little zip-up bag. But they're just waiting on the bags being released from... Um, uh, customs and then they'll be able to um, list those in their shop and I want to buy one and it comes with a little roller so you put your pricking pattern on the roller and then it just keeps going on forever you can just keep turning the wheel and <laughs> letting your lace off the edge and keep redoing that pattern over and over again till you've got a nice big long piece of lace um, so and that one you can just take it's in a little bag like this and then you just open it out and you've got your travel pillow so you can do lace on the go. <laughs> um, so that's my lace making. So I hope I didn't bore you to tears with that um, but it's something that I've always wanted to do since I was um, really little. Um, there are a lot of really helpful videos out there um, on how to do lace making now which makes it a bit easier and the beginner bobbin lace group that I joined um, on Facebook has been so helpful. The people on there are so friendly. You can post progress pe pictures and they'll give you really helpful hints on how to get your tension right and there's no judginess or anything. It's really, really um, a supportive environment. So, yeah, really to love it. Anyway, now we get on to uh, journals. So I've got two journals I'm doing this year. Um, as well as my diary, that's my day-to-day -day stuff. Um, but I just got this at Woolworths. This, um, I thought it was kind of perfect. It says true to myself and it's frozen themed. Um, and I'm a kid at heart. Um, but I wanted to do a reflective journal because I needed an attitude change this year. I think I've been under a lot of, um, stress the last few years and, dealt with people bullying me at work and things like that and I think I became like that wounded dog in even though you wouldn't be able to tell from my floss tube I kind of became that wounded dog in the corner of the shelter that snaps at everybody <laughs> and I didn't want to be that person anymore because I'm actually I've always been a really giving kind um forgiving person and I feel like I just went into protection mode the last few years so I, I and, and I've been getting a lot more moody lately I don't know if that's hormones leading up to menopause or something so and I also wanted to stop swearing so because um, yes I do swear like a trooper I work in construction and mining <laughs> of course I swear um so I want to stop that so I decided to um, do a reflective journal and this is very personal so I'm not going to show you um in here specifically but um basically I've been I draw like a little swear jar in the corner and I put a little gold colored I've got um coloring pencils and some colored pens and I have a gold pencil and I just put a gold little dot every time I swear and um, that's like a gold coin in my swear jar and then um, if I don't swear I put a love heart for the day um, and then I've got a little square that says um, for mood and one for stress and then I color that green or blue if I'm 
having a good day and if I'm getting a bit stressed or have a bit of an outburst or something then I'll put the red or pink or something like that just to show that or orange just to show that I was you know and then I might put what triggered it so that I can understand why I reacted that way um, and then I put down three things I'm grateful for which I have found so helpful um, it's just it doesn't matter how small it is it could be I'm grateful for being able to sit and stitch in the morning or I'm grateful you know for rainy Sundays and I can just sit at home and relax or anything it could be anything um, Grateful for Wayne taking the bin out every day without question, you know, I don't have to do it. So just little things like that. And it's amazing how it starts to change your mindset. And I started feeling more positive. Um, so I've really found that helpful. Then I note down if I go for a walk um, and then I note down a couple of items of self-care. Did I manage to do anything self-care that day? Could be just having a nap, could be um, doing my slow stitching, it could be anything. Um, and yeah, and then at the end of the week, um, at the end of every week, I do a uh, week in review, like a reflection, and I note down, did I laugh? Because I found recently that I had stopped laughing a lot, like, <laughs> and it seems silly, but, um, I realised that my mood had changed to the point where I wasn't laughing all the time, so I try to think back in the week, did I find time to have a laugh? And then um, what were the positives for the week and what were the negatives? And and then I do a bit of a reflection, so personal reflection. So I found that really helpful and I add in like stickers, fun stickers and things like that. And then at the end of the month, I do a month in review and I put down like highlights um, from the month. So the positives that happened throughout the month that I am happy with. Um, and then I do like a little colour in title page because um, that's fun and relaxing and just add little stickers and washi tape and everything and um, yeah and I also made myself you can get these from Spotlight they're called um, ribbon clamps these little things you can get them in gold or silver and um, you literally just cut your ribbon and then put the end in um, and then just close it tight and it's got these little claws that hang on to the ribbon and then it's got a little um, loop on the end so then you can just make a beaded um, or put one of your scissors um, like a little zipper pull or something on there and it just um, makes a really nice bookmark and then I added beads to this end it helps weight it down and the ribbon's soft so it doesn't wreck your pages in your book so then um, it only took like few minutes to make um so then I just pop it oh, I've got it upside down pop it in the book and it's nice and smooth because it's satin ribbon and it just hangs out either end so easy easy to make that so that's my reflective journal and this is my lovely journal that Dawn Frosty cross stitch um x stitch gave me and um, this is my journal for uh, craft that I do throughout the year and I'm actually really enjoying it so let me get to one where I can show you so um, this is where I did my very first sample of lace and it doesn't look much because it's just a braid, a four strand braid um, with two pair of bobbins. But um, today I did my first bobbin lace braid, um, my very first one. And then I just washi taped it in there, you can't really see it. And then I put down like what projects I worked on. And then as the time went on, I put my other sample here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, this one that looks more involved but a bit dodgy and I put down like nine pair of bobbins used and what pattern I followed and how I messed it up and stuff like that and then in here I've got like um, Joanna from Mojo Stitches gave me a little note with um, my recent purchase so I put that in there um, she also um, wraps her sari ribbon around some old book 
pages so I tore it up and put it in um, my all throughout my journal and then um, added a little sewing machine sticker um, some days are boring some have got other stuff like this is a nice that you can see my progress I'm getting neater with my samples of lace and um, yeah, just put down what I worked on each day. Oh, and here I added in a rose from our garden and that I worked on bunny burrow. So there's a dried rose from our little pot plant out on the veranda. And um, yeah, and then further along, I got a beautiful Christmas postcard from Daylene in um, So Grateful um, podcast, Floss Tube. And so I washi taped it in here and then I can still look at the back, which has got a personal message. Um, so that's really lovely. And then um, there's more of my lace getting a bit more involved now, but very wonky. We can all have a laugh at that. Um, yeah, so I just put different things in it. And I did do a little bit of a video. And then when it comes to February, I've already put in some little felt hearts that I cut out and a bit of commercial lace along the page edge to find it. So you can do anything in your journal. This is not flash. It's a bit daggy, but um, some people are more talented than others at doing this sort of thing. But yeah, and just throughout the book, I put um, some of the pages from Joanna in. And yeah, I got this little sticker sheet of um, sewing machines, which are really cute from Mum and... Mum and Me Handmade Designs on Etsy and she also has a website mumandmehandmadedesigns.com.au where she has lots of journal stickers and she's based in Australia. So I've got all these little sewing machines. I also got ones for my everyday journal that has like um, chores to do each week that you can tick off and like running shoes to if you went walking um, and different things like that. So have a look at her um, Etsy page. I'll put a link down below. Um, yeah, so that's my journal. So that's basically, oh, I've got to show you one acquisition that I got that is super cute. I shared it on um, Instagram. I was looking for something um, for my, um, when you're winding bobbins, you have to unravel like roughly a metre of thread, wind that onto your bobbin and then you need to wind, like pull out another meter of thread um, for the second bobbin and then you cut it and then you wind that onto your bobbin so that the two are joined. Um, anyway, I was always having trouble with the spool falling on the floor um, and then the dog would try to steal it and things like that. So I came across this just surfing the web and it's um, a twine, a cast iron, twine holder and it came with a big ball of twine that you use in the garden or whatever um, and it, it doesn't move but this um, pin comes in and out um, so it fits my spool of thread so it's a, it's no thicker than say a, a pencil and it just goes inside my spool like so and then when I put it in here load it up and then I can just unravel um, my thread easily without this going anywhere and it's so heavy it's not going to fall down or anything so got that on um, eBay and normally everywhere else they were over a hundred dollars but I got this one would you believe um, the ones that are over a hundred dollars you can get have like an extra hook on it that holds a pair of scissors um, but I wasn't fussed if I didn't have a hook for my scissors. Um, so this one I got on eBay for about 30 something dollars. So I'll put the link to that below if you're interested in getting one for yourself. They are, if you look up cast iron, um, twine holder, um, you'll find there's some with little birdies and they're not all brown cast iron. Some have got like green oxidization on them and things like that with like a little birdie and things like that. So one's got a chook. If you like farmhouse stuff so check it out they are available on ebay and they're probably cheaper if you are in the us to get on ebay on sorry amazon but to get it to australia it was like i don't know 20 or 30 dollars shipping as well so um that's why it costs so much so 
this I got on eBay I'll share that with you and yeah check it out but um, I'm afraid that's your lot today that's all I've got other than showing you some little flowers from our pot plants that are almost on their way out now um, but I put in a little shot glass that I got when I was in um, Hungary and um, I thought oh here's the perfect tiny little vase for a little bud of um, our flowers these are our zinnias and we've got lots in bloom at the moment but I thought these ones were hiding down low and I thought I'll just cut them off and bring them inside so we could buy them so yep that's your lot today um, I'll catch you whenever I catch you next time and till then happy stitching happy crafting and have a great weekend bye